Welcome back adventurers to the adventures of the warrior queens of the Mediterranean. And uh, this time we actually are a queen. And our realm is called the Despotate of the Mediterranean. Um, yeah, I, I looked into that, into the naming. It was actually correct in Greek. It is like an exception. Um, so yes, is correct. But um, I thought since the series is called Warrior Queens of the Mediterranean, our realm should be called the realm of the Mediterranean, right? The Queendom of the Mediterranean. Anyway, um, so that's what I went for. Right, this of the Mediterranean. So this is uh, coming from the Greek. Um, we could use the Greek name, but I think more people are familiar with uh, the uh, English name here. Although I know I have uh, some Greek uh, followers, at least I've seen some Greek names pop up. So that is fine. I also want to thank somebody who commented on episode 6, a little links. Um, yes, I'm this far ahead. Actually, I scrapped my recording for this episode um, because of what you said. And I'm going back and doing this episode again with more of a focus on the role play. So uh, the comment said that um, focusing on learning when you're here. When you air is perfect to do that later when you could focus on diplomacy prestige to form the kingdom. So that is actually what I did and our current um, ruler, Isabel, still our first ruler, is still focused on uh, majesty because that is what we needed to get the, um, the kingdom title that we were going for. Securing the Mediterranean decision, that all that. And um, I actually recorded this episode with a, f a switch back to learning in an attempt to get enough prestige to reform the faith. But um, it, did, it doesn't make that much sense from a roleplay perspective. So I went back and I'm doing this again and we're staying on August. I think that makes perfect sense to focus on diplomacy now that we have this kingdom, queendom, sorry. Um, yeah, and strengthening it, building it up, focusing on um, establishing control, on developing our culture and stuff like that. So yes, that is what we will be doing. Uh, I will be taking a few more counties here and there. But maybe we shouldn't um, stretch ourselves too thin militarily. Um, I also um, used the console because, um, yeah, it wasn't possibly in any other way to put my daughter here and give her most of the island of Sardinia. And um, yeah, this way she can get some experience ruling at least some counties uh, we're still holding on to the uh, silver mines of Caralis here ourselves because we need uh, the money especially now that we have a royal court which costs an awful lot of money we should look into that as well um, and I'm thinking I have another county here Handax, which was our original capital to give that to our second daughter, uh, Arathi, except Arathi is now only 17 and she's our High Almoner and Antiquarian. So she's doing important work at court. So she's also shy, so to put her in charge of the county, I'm not sure how well she will be doing with stress at that point. But let's see. Down the line, that is the plan. This is what she will be inheriting anyway uh, for succession right now. Uh, the Kingdom of Kriti, the Duchy of Kriti, and the County of Handax will go to her. That will mean she will share this island with her brother Pelagios, but she will have her own kingdom, and that is not exactly what we want. We would like to keep it all together in one realm. So. Let's see how that goes. 
Um, one way to prevent that is to establish an empire, but we are far away from that. Empire. Found a new empire, so we can either have a realm size of 120 or more, or 80 or more and three kingdom titles. We only have 20 counties right now, so... Or realm size, whatever. Um, so this, this is not gonna happen, most likely, unless we really push for... Uh, claims on bigger uh, on duchies and so on and um, go like a warring all around and that is not really what we are about so maybe we will have um, some struggle afterwards just like we had before between a uh, Sophia and a uh, Zoe we'll see we'll see how that develops um, Isabel is an ambitious character, she's brave and stubborn, but yes, yeah, she doesn't really have a knack for theology, I think, so we're gonna leave that, except this one thing. We are going to found a holy order. That will help us. Even though we don't have our own faith yet, that is something that we are now pushing on uh, towards the future. Uh, Sophia is focused on learning She's an astute intellectual and she's just and ambitious. She's just, okay. That's interesting. Um, so she can focus on that. That's all fine. She's pregnant again for three months. Okay, let's see uh, if she gets a daughter that could um, be the heir after Sophia. Um, so where to establish this holy order, we could do it here in Ita Beneath, as the game suggests. Um, but this is quite a good city, and I'd like to keep that around. There is also here in Syracuse the city of Calta Tirone, which isn't quite as developed as this one yet. So I think it would be. Um, more beneficial to us to give them this city. So I'm going to change that to Catatirona. There are a few other possibilities, but they're further away. And, and this is our main duchy, our core duchy of the kingdom. So we're going to be trying our very best to hold on to this on succession as well. So this is a good place, I think, for. And we lost a thousand piety because of that, but that's fine because now we have a Coptic Holy Order that can help us whenever we are fighting people that are not of our faith. Right? That's what it says here. Hostile faith. So, what about Catholics? Are they hostile? Astray. So they are not hostile, they're just astray. Okay, so, but if we are fighting Muslims, for example, here to the south, then we can call them in. And they have uh, heavy infantry and a light horsemen, which is something we do not have because we focus exclusively on um, now archers. We should build some buildings. Oh, we're also back to zero gold, so we can't build anything. Or even um, get some more of these, because now that we are a queen, we have possibility to add another regiment. That is fine. Okay, so I put my, uh, my daughter here. We should probably, and it will suggest that here as well, uh, negotiate an alliance with her, which she will accept. I also got rid of all my um, prisoners, either by ransoming them or by just executing them. Uh, we can imprison criminals. Countess Juliana has committed crimes. Oh yes. Juliana. You were just one of these ran. See, that is one of my gripes with the game as it currently is. I can't grant a county to one of my daughters but if I grant it let's see here to a random noble 
then often somebody like this countess will pop up. How does that work? Right? So the problem is our Coptic faith has a male dominated, right? Enables the lost male only male preference. So the this faith definitely wants men as rulers, but then our culture is the opposite as far as a martial uh, as soldiers go they can both serve both men and women can be commanders and knights at the rear. but we have warrior queens so this is a female preference and that's our succession as well i didn't change this that's because of these this warrior queens and the nubian a heritage we have well it's byzantine nubian anyway a female preference So they clash, and that is something I want to solve by uh, reforming the faith, or what's creating a new faith. But that's not going to happen with Isabel, she is now 57 years old. We would need something like 6,000 piety to change everything I want to change, so... It's going to be hard to get. Unless she has a long life, we could also do the whole of body tree in the learning lifestyle but as one of my viewers said this isn't really her strength it doesn't really fit her character okay so that is what we are going to be doing so yes i do read the comments and please leave more comments i love People who engage with the content and have good ideas about it, I don't always agree. But in this case, I did very much agree um, with the main point. Although I think I'm going to keep agrarian. Um, looking at culture, and I have been looking at that, what would be a culture to hybridize with I'm not so sure so again ideas are welcome this one um, culture here of Antiochia um, is interesting in that it has seafarers and that unlocks the ability to sail in major rivers that could be interesting and it has a lower embarkation course which is very interesting for um, basically an island realm and trade port line of buildings increase levies okay that's not too important but it will increase control growth that is nice they also have industrious which is also a nice tradition to have gain more development growth every time a building is constructed up to once a year So that is something, but we also have Byzantine heritage, so we can't hybridize with them right away, only if we would switch heritage to something else, which at this point for us does not make sense, except maybe one of the Italian cultures, because we're very involved here, right? Now Sicilian doesn't really have anything interesting for me, because we already have Xenophilic. Um, a Republican legacy, maybe. Maybe. Are cities important to us? That's the question. I think maybe they are. What I'm wondering is, what about this Republic vassal opinion? Minus 20 points. That is weird. Shouldn't Republic vassals like us more if we give more importance to cities? They probably like us less because they will be required to give more taxes and levies to us. Republican vessels above the rank of baron provide more taxes and levies. So if they are like a count or a king, as in the case of um, Venice, right? Maybe. Let me know what you think. Um... Lombard, also Latin heritage. I don't like any of these. Martial, martial admiration, maybe. Yes. 
Again, Republican legacy, they have that. I don't like isolationist. I don't like stand and fight. That is for men at arms that we don't have, that we don't specialize in. Italian, Republican legacy again. They have refined poetry, which is nice, but not that important to us. And uh, formation fighting experts. Yes, we have archers, right? So that could be beneficial, maybe. Um, Sardinian here, they really have nothing to offer us. And Cisalpine, Maritime Mercantilism. This is a good one to have. Um, we can already construct trade ports, so that is not important. Uh, coastal holdings in counties of this culture provide an additional 10% tax. That is very nice. And Republic Vassal Opinion plus 10. So if we could combine this with the Republican Legacy, minus 20 plus 10, it almost evens each other out. That might be worth looking into. So should we go for Cisalpine culture and then maybe diverge and just buy the seafarers that this one has? Unless we also switch to the Latin heritage that they have here, but I, I feel it doesn't make sense from a role-playing perspective. From game mechanical perspective, it makes perfect sense, but then there's also Andalusian here, which is the actually the original culture of Isabel. Although she grew up as a Christian, not as a Muslim. Ritualized friendship is very nice. I like this one. Tabletop warriors, interesting. Movement speed plus 10%, that's very nice. Um, yeah, maybe. Again, here, ritualized friendship, maritime mercantilism is interesting. Physical codes, yes. High partition would be good for us. And then we have, well, the rest is, Safari is not really relevant. Also, although they also have maritime mercantilism, that is nice. All right, back to the game, because uh, I've been talking for a long time about meta things. Um, did we ask her to become a... Yeah, we did that, right? So she's already considering a proposal from us. And uh, my Marshal Count Apandoleon left his position in your court as a result of his marriage to a landed spouse. Well, he was already married to her, but now she's landed. So I need a new uh, Marshal. And my son of status more like to receive a good education. That is nice. Oh, I already have a new marshal. I already appointed Count Isidore, although he's also getting older. So hopefully um, he stays alive long enough. Right, so what is our next goal? I have two ideas. I want to get these farmlands of Salerno. Actually, I'm thinking of like just getting the whole coast here, right? Getting that all together makes sense. But also Cyprus or Kypros, as they say in Greek. And that is possible now that the Caliph is weak and alone. He has no allies. But we don't have enough prestige to declare war, so... Fellows of the Lord, as the order of, of the Order of St. Anthony grows, we need more land. We just, like, weeks ago, right? Established the Holy Order. Uh, over here. Got the Tyrone. Yeah. Anyway, um, you are growing and you want more land. You want another city. The city of Yulfud is perfectly suited. Where is that again? Oh, that is there. Um, I don't think so. 
Polentia. Where is Polentia? That is there. That makes more sense to have a base towards the west. And at least we gain some money out of that. We can call a hunt. That's nice. And there is something in our court. Disable building in Neapolis. Why are the buildings in Neapolis disabled? We're not over the limit. They should re enable. Uh, we can create the Kingdom of Kriti. Yeah, we don't want that. We don't want two kingdom titles. Also, it would cost too much money that we don't have. And we have low control in counties. No, let's fix that. And you are already working on something. All right. Maybe convert faith. Right. Maybe here. You are promoting culture, Syracuse. That's fine. That is fine. And we've discovered city planning. City planning here. That is nice. And uh, we should probably work on Casus Belly. Though we could do mustering grounds to get more men at arms regiments and bigger ones. We're doing quite well with our armies as it is. We have good knights, we have some good units, men at arms units, um, and we have some good vassals. As long as uh, we can rely on them. Yeah. Although I do think this makes more sense than this now that we have a, a Mediterranean. Um, Castle's belly for the next 100 years, right? And we are still waiting to get into the early medieval era in six years. Nice. Let's go to court. There is a situation here. A stable request. My son of Sastros is growing up and will one day be expected to take an elevated role in society. Apparently, he has decided today is that day. Mother, can I have a destrier? A war horse? For a child? As I pondered the request, the notice master of the horse county is the doors of Ayatium. Ayatium. Uh, glancing at me from across the throne room, at least I now know who my son has been talking to recently. A bold choice. I pay 92 count Isidoros. And Astartes gains a struggling with destrier for 10 years. Okay, how about something smaller? Practicing with Palfrey. Yeah, I think this would be better. I mean, he is what? He's 11. A war horse might be a bit much to handle for him. And especially since he is lazy and content. He's not like ambitious or anything. Yeah, how about something smaller? And I think uh, we should be holding court. Let's hear the petitioners. Ah, there goes our prestige. Hopefully we get something back. Yeah, this music isn't quite as... Um, as much of an exaltation or something of our court. It's kind of subdued. Trumpets are a bit better. Okay, sitting on my throne, I gesture for my guards to open the doors of the hall. A stream of people file in, some lining up in front of my throne, while others move out of the way. They can simply observe the proceedings. After several moments, all movement in the chamber has ceased. All faces turn towards mine expectantly. Follow me, I count three petitioners lined up in an orderly row, waiting for me to call on them. Just for the first in line to approach. 
the air is thick with anticipation as my martial count Isidorus approaches me. My lady, I come with grave news, but with a solution to fix this problem. It is becoming increasingly clear that the Greeks and greco nubians are becoming more, perhaps even too similar. It is paramount that we show them that it is us greco nubians who are at the forefront of innovation. Ah, oh, okay. Let's host the festival. Cultural acceptance decreases. County stores gains opinion of me. Okay, I gain a lot of prestige though. Uh, arrange for an exhibit to show our grandest accomplishments. Let's just, yeah, the more mild version of that. Or there's no need. No, let's host the festival. It doesn't even cost me any money. Well, then let's host the festival. There we go. Now we have enough prestige to wage war again. I recognize the next set of petitions immediately. They are Aranka and Nino, a pair of that are well known for the intense rivalry. Worryingly, they are not arguing with each other. My lord, begins Aranka. I have to tell you, my lord. You mean my lady? I have to tell you that the people are intensely dissatisfied with your despot Abazan. That's my husband. Yes, so am I. He's a cheater. We fear that his recent behavior is not becoming of a good and loyal despot Abaza. Um, yeah, you mean a queen... What's the word? Consort. And we demand that you do something about it. Mm, I should do something about it. A diplomacy challenge. I can try to convince Araka and Nino to drop the matter, but it's not going to be successful, most likely. Uh, I'm not your enemy. She is. I can exploit the rivalry to turn them against each other. Manipulated enemies. Perhaps you back those words up with steel. A prowess challenge. Gain dread, or I shall speak to Despot Abbas about their behavior. And I spend prestige. I don't want to spend prestige on this, though I do want to speak to my husband about his behavior. What would I do? Ambitious, brave, and stubborn. Also, I'm loyal. And my husband is not. I'm not really like into intrigue, manipulation. I'm more like meeting the problem head on kind of woman. I should speak to him, yeah. I should. You're absolutely right. There goes my prestige again. A shadow in the night. The woman who approached my throne is clearly a commoner. My lady. See, she knows the title she needs to use. My lady, she begins her speech. I represent the local community of Panamos. Yeah, that's where we are. That's the capital city. Or the capital holding. In the last few months, our cemeteries have been plagued with the disappearance of bodies. All have been dug up and left no trace. At first, we feared wild animals or obscure powers at work. But then your own court physician, Armago, was caught red-handed, holding the dead away for his experiments. Please put a stop to this blasphemy. I can encourage grave robbing. I can reprimand him for not inviting me to the party. I can have him arrested, but as I have a fair, yeah, no one will think me a tyrant, okay, and they gain safe cemeteries, or Armagol just cut it off and also gain safe cemeteries. Yeah, Armagol, focus on your living patients. Cut it off, and I mean not like cut off their limbs, but stop doing weird things. Okay, and that is here. That is it. My business here is done. It's a nice room, but it needs some sprucing up. Eh? It needs some sprucing up. Alright. 
So we're still short of uh, the 300 we would need for this. Well, in that case, we should probably go on a hunt. Yes, that's what I was thinking. The Seductive Rival. By God's nails, I shout as I read the letter. That brooding rival of mine, Tito. Tito? Tito. Tito, probably. I spit on your name. Not only have you used trickery and charm to convince my vassal Countess Irene to marry you and break the bond with Vas... Vasilio? Vasilio. Vasilio. Sardinia. Yeah. Vasilio or something. Um, no, you've also turned the Countess against me. Your poisonous tongue is spreading lie after lie about me. You don't love her, you just want me to suffer. I must convince her how treacherous he is. She broke her bond. The priest will rain fire on her for that. Uh, perhaps he could be of use. The, the husband could be of use. I don't think so. The cur has accomplished nothing. Uh, I must convince her how treacherous he is. And she's convinced and repentant. Okay. We have a notable guest. Onda Champlit is a trained healer. Trained physician. That's pretty good, but you're also a drunkard. Okay. Um, we were going to go and hunt. Lack of servants. Lack of servants. Oh, I see. Yeah, we were here, but we didn't look at this. Because everything is at minimal. Yeah. We can spend a little bit more. That's doable. Do we need this? Guess we stay longer. Mm, I don't think we need that right now. So apply this. All right. We've changed to outmoded fashion, decent food, and some servants. Now, if we hold a hunt. Yeah, we have a better possibility for results. Telling a beast, you would think it a creature from myth, perhaps a god disguised in animal form. It was the largest boar I've ever seen. Even after the beast was wounded, the chase lasted half a day. It is still an imposing sight lying dead before me. This one will fetch a fine price, or it will be stuffed and sent to the Pope. Um. How about stuffed and put up in my courtroom? Why don't I get that choice? Right, it will fetch a fine price then. We can always use some more money. Hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horse to leave the farmers behind as the servants prepare the boar and other game for the journey back. In spite of our difficulties along the way, the hunt went very well. We return home reinvigorated and we get a bunch of prestige. Okay, I wanted to have a look. These people can go because they're dead. Um, we're almost done with the building here. Alright. And this one. We can't upgrade this yet because what do we need for that? Memorialism. Okay. Yeah, we might want to add hunting grounds. Right, for uh, improving our archers. Or uh, military camps, archer damage plus four. That's probably better. Yeah, 
let's do hunting grounds here and the uh, military camps in Panamas. Count of my dynasty. My daughter in law Elvira has given birth to a daughter since the little one is part of the Zara dynasty. She should be blessed with a good name. Andipatra, mm. Arni, Constantia, Zoe, Zenovia, Risophony. Yes. I wanted to pause here. Wags, charmed vassal. I stumble upon my vassal camp Massiva, crouching beside my dog Wags, uh, vigorously scratching his stomach. This dog of yours is quite the charmer, my lady. He is a good boy. He is. Um, I want to have a look at this. This is done in 14 days. But we don't have enough monies. But yeah, the idea is to go for military camps after that. Damage. And then we're, we have a full house except the touchy building. Okay. Well, let's see what we can do. We have Salerno here that we want. And we also have our eye on uh, Kipros, as we said before. Now, this is going to be a long war because he has a big realm and his capital is far away all the way over here and we're not going to go there I think unless we sail around to here and cross the mountains this is really weird he has this bit it's like an exclave and that's where his capital is his realm is called Al Arabia, Arabia, right? But he's not actually in Arabia. He's in uh, Caucasus. What is this, Georgia? Or something like it. Um. But we do want to take the opportunity to start taking this island and add it to our realm. I also want these islands here, but they are stronger. So I think we should go for this first now that we have an opportunity. It's not an amazing uh, county. Plains, right? But it's not very developed. But I feel it should be part of our realm with all the islands of the Mediterranean, basically. So let's take the opportunity and declare war. Mediterranean conquest for this bit, yeah, Magosha. What would be the Greek name? for that bit. Um, anyway. Okay, the closest bit we have is here. Oh, that's our old capital. And we will need to pull in an ally. I need to check up on them first. Bulgaria and Makuri are the closest. He doesn't seem to be busy. He's pretty strong. Let's pull him in. And then... We're gonna have one, right? Yeah. Little armies. Alright. King Yakov is coming to help us. Yeah, we don't have enough money for uh, building more economies right now. My friend Adelph is tight, I gained stress. Alright, okay, there they are. Let's go. Let's go here. Oh, really? Here, I guess. And take it from there. I don't know if they have raised their armies there. They have. So we want to lose our, um, what's it called, 
exactly this embarkment. See, with the help of some friends, it's so much easier. And we're not even over this time. Trappings of Majesty. I stand above my subjects as a sovereign ruler, unequaled in the realm. Dressing the part with resplendent garments and jewelry would serve as a subtle reminder to everyone that I am in charge. Only the finest ermine and velvet for me. Local fashions have symbolic meaning, or I do not need things to legitimize my rule. They would help, but we don't have. Well, we don't want to spend the money on that. A child of my dynasty. This is Princess Arathi. Okay. Um, Callistos. The snake at court. I'm heading for my chambers to enjoy some blessed sleep. When I hear a faint rustle from a window, just the wind, I think, until the wind starts to speak. Odell, to open up, my beloved. It is I, Anastasio. I push the shutters open, and lo and behold, a man has climbed up to Odell's window. It is Anastasio, the knight of Captain Jordan of the Company of the Star. Are they? They are not even fighting for us. Have you no shame, guards? Alright, so now we hold the county, it is like we have occupied it, but it's only 15% war score. Okay, let's have a look at this perk. Um, I think we should go, go, go down to August, which will give us um, extra diplomacy, martial and prestige. So, yeah, we're not very dreadful, but alright, it will help. Monthly prestige per night, that will be a big one. Yeah. And we took a prisoner. Actually, we took two. But they won't be ransomed. They cannot be ransomed. The Shaq will not accept it. He'd rather have his daughters. Is that his daughter? Be in prison. Granddaughter, what can I say? Have it your way. So enjoy some Greco Nubian food. And uh, finish the promote code just in Syracuse. Okay. Ah, they have gone across. Why are they so much smaller? Aren't they supposed to be 5,000? Or did he not send every. Every bit. Or did he lose so many troops? Oh yeah, he lost a lot. Okay. Um... You. Yeah, culture. Neapolis. That's it. This is nice music. Though I think it's from the rice mod, not from the game. I have concluded my task. That is fantastic. Excellent. Now I shall give you another task. Yeah, again, I think Neapolis needs to go first. Because, uh, yeah, if we want to take advantage of those farmlands and the money they bring in, then we need this. Now it's reduced by 92% due to low county control. Just imagine what kind of money we could be making. Which is also why I want to take some land over there. There are not that many farmlands around, so we can choose what we can get. 
Wags, run away! I'm out riding my dog Wags beside me when he suddenly runs off into the farmlands. My retinue assures me he will come back. But what if he doesn't? Heal, Wags, I said heal, wait for me! And I try to catch him. I find Wags after a few minutes of searching happily, wagging his tail and pretending like nothing is wrong. He's clutching something in his mouth, and as he gently places it before me, I see it's a couple of golden coins. Thank you, Wags. Where did you find those? Yeah, we should probably help out, because we're just here. Are they coming to us? Are they disembarking, or are they are just going back there? Um, let's go here. There's a fair bit of money for that disembarkment uh, bonus. Or embarkment bonus, that would be very welcome. And Prince Grimoras, my one of my younger sons, um, he has come of age and has become a fortune builder. That's very nice. Although somehow you managed not to get any of the stewardship traits, but being calm and just and content is very nice. And they flee. Um, then maybe take that one. Oh, that's only nine. This has 14 loot. This has 17 loot. Let's go here. And I can assign a guardian of for Maximus, my grandson. From uh, Simahos. Okay. You want a martial education. Yeah, that seems to make sense. Let's first have you study a language. Brythonic? I don't think that is very useful in the Mediterranean. How about Spanish? Iberian Vulgar. Yeah. And I think you should start wearing some uh, more appropriate clothes. I mean, this is fine if you're going to the beach, but in our court, uh, we want something. Let's go for Italian. Ooh, that's fancy. That's very fancy. But if you're going to school, you might as well wear something fancy. Show you around. Uh, an important family. Okay, uh, then we said he needs to be educated, martial education. We're good at that, but maybe there's somebody else who can teach him. Like Sophia. grow fonder. To nurture relationships between the next generation of rulers is a duty we should not neglect, says Despot Abadza. Some of your more influential vassals have children that I am certain Princess Sophia would benefit from knowing. Sophia's already 22 years old, she can make her own decisions, you know. But alright, there is Anna, who is um, Lagios' daughter. And she's going also for learning. There is Theophano, who is my vassal Count Stefanos of Rigi, his daughter. He's going for intrigue. And then there is uh, Dimitri Theodorokanos. That should probably be Dimitri Theodorokani to go with Greek um, tradition, but anyway. None of these are like, inspiring. I guess Anna because she is um, family. The snake at court. I'm heading from my chambers to enjoy some blessed sleep again when I hear a faint rustle from a window again. Just a wind, I think, again until the wind starts to speak again. Arathi, open up my pet. It is I, Thekla. So Arathi is one of my daughters, right? 
And there is a Thecla, a mayor of Amalfi, who is coming to seduce her. What did you just call my daughter? My pet. She's not your pet. I have a bit of respect. Amorosa. King Yakov died. And we seize the hand mirror. Wow. Uh, attraction? Of, okay, that's nice. Yeah. It's a nice trinket from Alexandretta. We won the siege and we got 17 monies. 17 gold. And we got a prisoner. And we can ransom her for more monies. Great. Um. Do we want to go here? We are making progress with the war score. Um, on the ore here. There is, yeah, Mufti. Mufti has some money. Let's see. My friend Yakov died, the king of Bulgaria from drinking himself to death and his son who is now the king Kulin is jailed by the caliph oops oops that's not good so we are now in this on our own yes but we're still stronger so it's fine Thank you for cutting uh, the arrows down to size. Um, yeah, we're getting towards the end of the episode as I normally have it. I'm aiming for like 50 minutes per episode for this series, but we're going over. So I want to finish this damn war. As their despots and my vassals owe me their allegiance, my word is law. How much is obedience without devotion worth? In terms of crisis, a slow response or a half-hearted effort can lead to disaster. Can I afford such a risk? I will win their unwavering loyalty and I become a generous liege. Fear is a more effective tool or I have more important men to impress. Um, he is not my friend. He is my neighbor. Yeah, I should... Probably try to impress him a bit and maybe get an alliance or something. Or I might want to fight him. Grand Pamphilius died. Okay. And you have concluded your task of uh, converting the faith in Caralis. Okay, that is nice. We need a new steward. We need a new steward. Okay, Prince Rihuras is probably the best person for this, actually. He is my son, he has an education in stewardship, and he has the highest um, skill in it. Yeah, there we go. Royal Architect. We do want a Royal Architect. Why is he not the best to be the Royal Architect, though? Hmm. They have to be landed? Why doesn't he show up here? Anyway, you get the best. Best score for this. Or we could do Sophia. Let's do Sophia then. We'll get some more um, 
experience. Hopefully not too much stress, though. Do we need a cup bearer? We probably should have a cup bearer. Do we have a good one? Yeah, Damianos is excellent for this. That's good. Alright, who else in our prison? Nobody that we can get money for. Alright. Let's uh, get to war over with. Miraculous mother. I've heard that in a kingdom some distance from here there is a woman who was reported to have given birth to a hundred children in total. Not all at once, of course, but rather over the course of her life. How could someone go through all that? If such a woman exists, she must be a remarkable mother or an incredible liar. Amazing things like this happen all the time in this world. Or oh, I'm sure she just adopted a lot of orphans and lied about it. Um, amazing things happen all the time, yeah. I mean, we are in the Middle Ages, right? A lot of amazing stories. Evgenia Zara. Okay. to do diplomacy, that is honorable, but I'm not going to do that myself. As queen I'm rather busy, but my son Pelagius, who is a prince and a count, is also very good at this. Alright. Great, he's doing something useful at least. So, he likes me, but apparently I still really like him, even though he cheated on me. This is not quite right. Yeah, some of these things are not taken into account. As me and my counselors are gathering for a meeting, my dog Wax approaches me with banging eyes and a drooping tail. He does not like to be left alone, but I. But this is an important meeting. Uh, the dog has no place in a council meeting. I now control on the Ochia. I have another prisoner and I've got some more money. And my husband seems upset. As I exit the meeting room, I discover that Wax is gone. I look everywhere for him, high and low. What if he's lost and scared? Don't I have like. Ladies in waiting and so on that take, can take care of it. Suddenly I stumble upon my husband desperate uh, Abadza chastising a dog. A dog that looks suspiciously like wax. That's because it is wax. With torn paper and fabric all around him. There's to say Isabel, this beast completely destroyed my chambers. Everything is in shreds. Oops, bad dog. Bad dog. Okay, who else is in our prison now? Sheikh Adil. Sheikh Adil. He's not a very good soldier, so we can let him go. Yes, and we need some more war score. So let's go here. The best gear, I sign. I am inspecting my troops today in their camps. I walk by some smiths who are in the middle of repairing some weapons and armor. Everyone says they work hard to ensure my warriors are outfitted with the best gear. Their hard work shall not be in vain. Their hard work shall not be in vain. We have a faction against us, the peasant rebel from Pandux. Oh, yeah. I attended a ball at a local nobleman's house and met a most interesting person. We talked about all sorts of things and had a great time. Unfortunately, they had to be brilliant and I didn't even get their name. Who was that? Interesting talk with a stranger for one. And are we now done? Yes, we are now done. Okay, you now control Tarabulus. 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 Is that like tire? It's tire, right? Tears. Or something. Um, Any prisoners? You. You're from the same family? Yeah. As are you... As are you... Oh my goodness. That happens with these Muslim families that have so many children. 
as we saw in the Turkish Eagle series we just did before this. As it's upside and downsides. Anyway, we can enforce our demands, disband our armies, and Northern Cyprus is now ours. That means we are over the domain limit, so we should give this to somebody. Um, she doesn't stand to inherit it. That is weird, right? But it goes by kingdom titles, right? So why does this not? It's its own kingdom title. So she would get that first before she would get it, I think. That's how it works. Anyway, the war is now over. I shall look into a um, an appropriate person to uh, appoint for this county. And I shall see you back next time, hopefully. So, please hit that like button if you like this episode. And check back again tomorrow for the next episode.